All right, we're going to start a new series. Um, and we're going to be in the book of Proverbs a lot. I don't know. How many people make Proverbs one of their daily readings? Because I think it's important. It's a very, very, very important book. And I, if you don't, you should. Uh, 31 chapters in Proverbs, you can just about read it 12 times a year. You know, each chapter once and then get through one month and start on over again. And so it's very good. Great wisdom. Great wisdom comes from this book. And so we're going to look at that as, as, we, as we talk about walking in wisdom. And we'll have several messages. I'm going to say about five more after this one. But sometimes in the middle of that, I'll find a few more that I think we need to, we need to hear. Men, we're going to, we're going to be the targets in this one. You know why? Because Solomon's right in the boys. He's saying, here's what, we, here's what we need to do. Here's where we need to go. And, and here's what we need to stay away from. And, and so for families, listen, wives, if your husband's not being a very good husband, make sure he's here for the next few weeks, okay? Yeah. Remember that. All right. If you have disobedient children, get them here. It's going to be very important. All right. Walking in wisdom. The Christian's guide to wisdom. It says, so be careful how you live. This is the Apostle Paul to the Ephesian, the church at Ephesus. He says, don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Very important as we look at the Apostle Paul, he writes you know, this letter to the church. He says, I want you to live in wisdom. Okay? And a lot of us, as we, we look at that, we think, what does that mean? So many people today may know Jesus, but literally waste their lives even as a disciple. Why? Why is that? Well, a lot of times it's just not walking in wisdom. Second Timothy tells us where this wisdom comes from. I think it's very important as we, we look at this and, and we begin to think, you know, am I filling my life with wisdom? Well, my question would be, what are you filling your life with? Now, Timothy says it this way. Paul, uh, Paul to Timothy says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. The Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy about the Old Testament, about those scriptures. And he says that all scripture as God breathed was, was he was, it is mine, was from Genesis to, to uh, Malachi. And he's also, believe me, thinking of Proverbs. So important. Changes lives. Okay? Matthew 7. Jesus teaches it this way. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on a rock. Though the rain comes in torrents, and the flood waters rise, and the winds beat against the house, it will not collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching does not, and does not obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds his house on the sand, when the rains and the floods come, and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. The picture that Jesus gives us is that like exactly this. If you build your life on the rock, on his word and his teachings, you will be blessed greatly in this walk. And if you don't, just the opposite will happen. That house will collapse. So the next few weeks, here's, here's what we're going to be talking about. Wisdom in being a good spouse. Wisdom in family matters. Wisdom in matters of friendship. Wisdom in matters of business and wisdom in our relationship with God. And hopefully that pretty much touches on about everything we deal with daily, doesn't it? From jobs to spouses to friendships to business and all that. We'll look at that. And so what was the purpose of the book of Proverbs? If you go to Proverbs, you look in chapter 1, it'll just tell you immediately what the purpose of that book was. It says, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose, their purpose is to teach 
people wisdom and discipline. To help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live, listen closely, this is very important to grab this, disciplined and successful lives. I love successful lives, I don't always like discipline, okay? But together, they work, all right? To help them do what is right, what is just and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple knowledge and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these Proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and the riddles. The fear of the Lord is a foundation of true knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and discipline. Very important as you look at the book of Proverbs and you, you dive into it, that you read this. Here's where it all begins. It says, listen, the most important thing is, is this foundation. I want to read those, those, those uh, words from Jesus in Matthew because he tells us the importance of a foundation. It's important that we're building on the right foundation. Some of us could live our life and live it any way we want. And the problem is... In the end, our house collapsed because we're on the wrong foundation. Sand doesn't work. There is a bedrock that works. It is the true rock. It is Christ. And we begin to look at that. And in Proverbs, it says this, very important. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of that. You want to build the right kind of house? You want to live your life with wisdom? Then we begin that fear of the Lord. We begin that relationship with Jesus that allows us to build on the right rock. Over and over and over again, we'll look at that as we look at the scriptures in Proverbs. The definition of the value of wisdom. Wisdom may be defined as a realistic approach to the problems of life. Okay? Homer Haley, I don't know how many people know Homer Haley, was he was a, uh, a great theologian, and he says, Homer Haley offered this definition of wisdom. Wisdom is insight into the underlying causes and significance or consequences of things, which insight enables one to apply to the best and the knowledge which he has. To illustrate, you're yelled at by your boss, or your wife, or your brother in Christ. And you could react in many different ways. You could strike back physically or verbally, or you could do nothing. Problems is loaded with times and shares it with the scripture that we need to do when that happens. And it talks about in Proverbs 15, verse 1, reacting how? A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. You, you're going to see this over and over and over again in the book of Proverbs. Not how we always respond, but the book of Proverbs is how we should respond. There's a lot of times we'll say this. I probably should have responded in that manner, but I didn't. And so a lot of times what happens is because we don't use wisdom, we, we, we are just, you know, off-the-cuff responses. And what happens a lot of times is it'll change the direction, the course of our life, much like a sail. Wisdom is the insight which helps you decide what the best thing to do is. Okay? That's what wisdom is. There's a value in this wisdom. The first nine chapters of the book of Proverbs are, are going to tell you the value of wisdom and, and what it produces by living in this wisdom. Proverbs 3 says it this way, Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies, Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. 
She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. Wisdom's value is found in guarding us against the many pitfalls in life that are out there. Solomon's addressing his young, young man and he's saying, listen, if you go down this road, this is what's going to happen. There are consequences to the decisions that we make. Do you know that? Is anybody there? <laughs> We're going, I'm here because of this decision. Okay. Some decisions are great. You're here today, this morning. This is the possibly the greatest sermon you're ever going to hear. That was my choice. On and on and on in our lives that way. We'll go, man, this is a disaster that I'm in. What, what's happened? And we'll go, well, there's probably been choices made. There's places where we're at. So important. Wisdom's value. Proverbs 3, 21 through 26 says it this way. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. You need not to be afraid of sudden disaster or destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord is your security, and you will keep your foot, and he will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. There are many times when I go to bed at night, very thankful for the good choices I've made. And then there's times that you go to bed thinking, I made a terrible choice today. <laughs> Anybody there? The beauty is, in a relationship with the Lord, he helps us deal with whatever choices are made that day. Okay? The knowing that the rock is the one that we're with, that Jesus is the one that, we're, that is helping us through those days of life that aren't always good. The value of the book of Proverbs. Wisdom is normally gained, listen closely, through one of two choices. Now, I'm sure not everybody's ever done this, but, but uh, you can learn wisdom from trial and error. My dad, was a, he sat down and they'd say, well, hey, you're doing this and, and you look to be good at it. And, and, and how did you get to where you were at? And dad always said this, because we make terrible decisions up to the right decision. Meaning this, it was trial and error. Have you ever done the old trial and error thing? It's a terrible thing. It really is. It's a really bad way to find it. Because sometimes there's a lot of ugliness that comes through trials and errors. Well, I went down that road, and I finally got to this road. Going down that road got me to this road, but boy, I would like somebody to tell me not to go down that road to take this road. I've been We've all been there, probably. Trial and error. We need to know that, that, that trial and error wasn't Solomon's idea when he writes this book. He's saying, kids, I can get you to the right pathway right away. You don't have to go down those roads. You don't have to live in trial and error. You can pick the right road right away. The superior way of gaining wisdom is what makes the book of Proverbs so valuable. You see, the second one is gathering in the book of, of Proverbs and reading it and, allow, and applying it into our lives. Do you know what? There is great wisdom in seeking wise counsel. Somebody said counsel. There is great wisdom in seeking wise counsel. This is what you're going to see all the way through this book. There's times we don't know how to address the situation. There's times that we don't know how to deal with it. We're going to talk about family and spouse and children and jobs. and We're going to talk about that kind of stuff. How do we always approach that? Well, there's nothing greater. Listen, and I've used this over and over. Do you guys realize iron can sharpen iron? Anybody? You're not scriptural. You realize that? That's a very, that's very scriptural. Listen, wisdom can be gained from you and I, not only entrenched in the Word of God, but using godly people to gather advice. 
to say, I don't know what to do. Have you ever just picked up the phone with a godly person and said, listen, I'm at crossroads. I need some help. I know what the Word of God says here. I've read it, I've studied it, I've prayed in it. But I know you're a lot smarter. Your head's a lot greater than mine. I need some help. It's so important. That's wisdom. All the way through. We can see it's far better to find wisdom from people that have gone down the path, that are Christian people. Listen, we do not want to gather our information from people that are not believers if you're a believer. Does that make sense? Anybody? Does that make sense? It's very important that we as, as a body of believers connect with other believers who have the same purpose and the same focus in life to gather our information. We don't run down to the local brewing queue to sit down with our, our buddies and well, how did you get here in life? It doesn't work that way. Wisdom is gathered from godly individuals. We see it far over again and again. James says it this way. James 1, 5 through 8 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave in the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. It is so important as we, as we walk through our life on this earth that we do exactly what James says we need to do. We need to ask God, hey, we need wisdom. Where is that wisdom that we're going to gather from God? In His Word. Where else is that wisdom that we're going to gather? In God's people. Over and over and over again, we're going to see the need of this. We're going to walk through the book of Proverbs, and you're going to see Him just say, this is the road you need to go down. Now, sometimes we'll take a different road. We'll say, you know what? I think we'll just check this trial and error thing out. It'll always fail us. Like building a house on sand, Jesus says. In Colossians 2, 2-3, it says it this way. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now listen, we're going to talk a lot about wisdom, and, and, and I'm not sure the wisdom in Proverbs is dealing directly with Christ, but, but, but it is incorrectly. There is nothing greater in our life to understand that wisdom, the greatest wisdom of all, rests in Jesus Christ. Okay? There is no other wisdom there is no other wisdom that would compare with that. And when we talk about wisdom, we're going to look at two different kinds of wisdoms out there. Because let me tell you one thing. I can be telling you one kind of wisdom, and you can go out in the world and you can find another kind of wisdom. Which wisdom is right? I'll always tell you, the wisdom that centers in Christ Jesus is the right wisdom. The wisdom that centers in his word is the right wisdom. Let's listen to what the Apostle Paul says about this word. He just starts out, he says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction. It says, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will discard the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So we're does this lead the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Every time I read that scripture, philosophers, scholars, brilliant debaters just jump out and I think how many people they take down the road with these philosophers. You realize that? Have you ever thought about that for a second? All these smart people. You ever put any 
Have you ever put a lot of stock in a man like this or a woman like this? Here's the bottom line. The stock that Paul says is doesn't come from those people. The stock comes from the message of Christ. The cross of Christ is where we need to be in our, in our wisdom. Okay? So, it says this way, verse 21, Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. In other words, the message of the cross which the world could see as foolish. It is foolishness to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven. It is foolishness to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So, when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it is all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And I don't want you to miss that scripture. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The power of God to what? To save us because do you know what in the end that's all that's going to matter? You think about it. When Jesus Christ comes back, it's not going to be all the knowledge that you have. It's am I in a right relationship with the one that can save my soul? The wisdom that we have to gather from the word of God is there's no greater wisdom than trusting in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, period. It doesn't go beyond that. The foolish plan of God, like how Paul says, the foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose the things in the world Instead, God chose things in the world and considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. So he plucks out those foolish people to shame those that are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world. Things counted as nothing at all and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. We're going to walk through the book of Proverbs, and the wisdom is talking about Proverbs. It directly relates to Jesus Christ, I guarantee you, because we know in the New Testament it tells us there is wisdom. It's Jesus. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Over these next few weeks, I want us to consider what our life is all about. I want us to consider the road we're going down. I want us to consider everything that we have filled our life full of. I think if I went around the room, I said, what is your life full of? Because there are many different things. But here's what it needs to be full of. A Christ. His teaching. His work. It will change the course of our life. The most important thing. The most important thing in the end. And we'll, we'll see that. Everyone here today is being will back and time to confess. Jesus Lord. Either here on this earth or in judgment time. I gotta finish with a, with a cute little story I, I uh, finished. And, and I don't always like to, to preach those those sermons on hell because it does. It, it, it kind of rips you apart, doesn't it? And, and, but but it's scriptural. And we gotta talk about it. It's very important. So so I get done with those 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 two sermons on judgment, and I'm at the door, and, and here come Bray and Tyler running to me, and they're like. Grandpa, we need to get baptized. I said, you guys aren't quite ready. But do you know what? I like that. Because what that means is 
We got young kids that look at that lesson. I want to be over the next few weeks. Let's go. God, we are so thankful for this day. We're so thankful for this church. We're so thankful for everyone here. And, and God, as we look at wisdom, as we look at the way that we need to live as believers over, over the next weeks ahead. Most important, help us to be wise in our relationship. God, let us put you first in everything we we understand the scriptures seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And then guess what? You're going to take care of everything else. And let's do it.